for any examination procedure, the proper collection of specimens is vital. The containers could be of glass, plastic or wax paper. They should be either disposable or sterilizable. Containers such as these, which are usually given to the hospital patients for feces collection, should never be used. Collection of feces directly into the container is preferred. Contamination of the sample with water, urine, dirt or soil should be avoided. Urine and water destroy protozoan parasites. Water may also contain free living organisms. Soil and dirt may introduce free living organisms, especially extraneous helminth forms that may complicate diagnosis. Feces should never be collected directly from toilet bowls, nor from soil or grass. Containers should be properly labeled as shown. In feces examination, we look for helminth, ova and larvae, protozoan cysts and trophozoites. These degenerate in collected feces. Degeneration occurs in different rates as shown. Ova, larvae and cysts are fairly sturdy and are less affected by the age of the specimen. Trophozoites are fragile and have a shorter survival time. For optimum results, the specimen should be examined immediately after passage, preferably within one hour but not later than two hours. If it takes longer than that, the feces should be preserved. If immediate examination is not possible or if it is intended to be used as learning material, it should be preserved as soon as possible. There are many preservatives that can be used. Select the appropriate preservative. Remember that formalin fixed material cannot be used for permanent mounds. Similarly, wet mounds cannot be made with PVA fixed specimens. MIF can be used both for wet mounds and permanent stains. Mix one part of feces with three parts of preservative. Stir thoroughly. Screw lid tightly to prevent leakage. Label properly. Polyvinyl alcohol is an excellent preservative for intestinal parasites. Like with formalin, one part of feces is added to three parts of the fixative and mixed thoroughly. PVA fixative contains mercury chloride which is toxic. Therefore, be careful when handling. The use of two-wheel system for preservation of feces is recommended for delayed diagnostic examinations. Two screw capped wires, each about 10 ml capacity, one with 10% formalin and the other with PVA fixative filled up to the halfway mark are used. Wet smears can be prepared either from fresh feces or feces preserved in formalin or MIF preservatives. Smears can also be made from concentrated material. Take the slide and place one drop of saline in the middle of the left half and one drop of iodine in the middle of the right half. Do not place them too close to the edges. Using an applicator stick, take a small portion of the feces. If it contains mucus or blood, take from such areas. Then. Mix the feces with the saline drop on the slide. 
Take a second portion of feces from the specimen and mix it with the drop of iodine solution. To avoid formation of air bubbles, hold the cover slip at an angle and lower gently. Mark specimen number on the slide. If there is too much fluid under the cover slip, making it float, an absorbent tissue or blotting paper can be used to remove excess fluid. But if the smear is still unsatisfactory, another one must be prepared. If you wish, you may seal the edges of cover slip with paraffin wax mixed with Vaseline. Sealing makes examination easier by preventing rolling and flowing of the suspension. It also prevents drying of the smear too quickly and contamination of the microscope stage. This is a properly made slide ready for examination. Wet mounts should be systematically and thoroughly examined by starting at one corner and going through the entire cover slip following either a vertical or a horizontal pattern. Scanning of the smear should be done using the low power or into 10 objective. Once a parasite is seen under low power, switch to high power or into 40 for confirmation. Saline smear is useful for detection of trophozoites. Motility, size, shape and inclusions in the trophozoites assist identification. For confirmation, however, permanent stain smears are necessary. This shows the trophozoite of Entamoeba histolytica in a saline smear. Its size is approximately 12 to 35 micrometers. Note, motility which is usually unidirectional. Note the clear ectoplasm and granular endoplasm. Inclusion bodies may be seen. This is a Giardia trophozoite showing its characteristic falling leaf motion. What you see here is Balantidium coli, the largest protozoan parasite of man. It is around 50 micrometers and is covered with cilia. Note the morphology of the parasite with prominent cytostome and the movement of the cilia. It moves rapidly and often turns in circles. This is a cyst of Entamoeba histolytica in saline. Chromatoid bodies are better seen in saline than in iodine. Elongate chromatoid body with bluntly rounded ends is characteristic of Entamoeba histolytica and Entamoeba hartmanii. However, for specific identification of protozoan cysts, the iodine smear must be examined. Examination of the iodine smear should also be done in the same systematic manner, locating the cysts under low power and then identifying them under high power. In identification of cysts, these characteristics are of importance. When counting nuclei, focusing with the fine adjustment is necessary since nuclei in the cysts are in different planes. Here you see an Entamoeba coli cyst with nuclei in different planes. Now let us look at some of the protozoan cysts. This is an Entamoeba histolytica cyst. It measures 10 to 20 micrometers 
round in shape and contains 1 to 4 nuclei. Entamoeba hartmanni cyst is identical to Entamoeba histolytica except that it's, it is smaller in size. It measures 5 to 10 micrometers. Entamoeba coli cyst is slightly larger than Entamoeba histolytica. It measures 10 to 35 mi micrometers. It is round oval in shape with 1 to 8 nuclei. Sometimes the cyst may be irregular in shape as seen here. This is a young cyst. You can see a large glycogen vacuole staining dark with iodine. Endolimax nana is a small cyst, size 5 to 10 micrometers, usually oval in shape, has four nuclei which look like four dots. Idamoeba is another small protozoan cyst measuring 5 to 20 micrometers. The cysts may be round, oval or irregular. In iodine preparations, the nucleus is difficult to see. The large brown stained glycogen vacuole is characteristic. Giardia lamblia cyst is oval in shape. It measures 10 to 20 micrometers. It has 2 to 4 nuclei. The remnants of the exostyle can be seen as two longitudinal lines. Another parasite that could be seen when examining feces is Blastocystis hominis. The characteristic feature of this is the presence of a large central body surrounded by an irregular rim of granular cytoplasm. It measures 5 to 20 micrometers. Next, let us look at some Helminthova. Tricuris egg has a characteristic rice grain shape with two polar plugs. The brown colored egg measures 50 by 22 micrometers. Several types of Ascaris lambricoides eggs are found in feces. This type which is oval or round in shape measures about 70 micrometers. It has an outer mammillated coat and a thick inner coat. The granular embryo is seen in the center. Sometimes the outer coat is lost and the ovum is seen surrounded by the smooth inner coat. Unfertilized ova are also seen. They are rectangular in shape. The ovum appears vacuolated and disorganized. Occasionally, in old stools, an embryonated Ascaris egg may be found with a larva inside. The egg may be corticated or decorticated. Hookworm eggs are oval and measure 65 by 40 micrometers. A characteristic feature is the thin shell which appears as a black line. When young, the ovum shows only a few divisions, while in mature ones, many divisions are seen. The eggs of Niceto americanus and Ankylostoma duodenale are identical in appearance and could be reported as hookworm species. In Strongyloides infections, rhabdiform larvae appear in feces. In fresh preparations, this larvae is actively motile, moving across rapidly. 
It measures around 225 micrometers by 16 micrometers. The lava is identified by two characteristic morphological features. The buccal cavity, which is shorter than the width of the head. Genital primordium, seen near the middle of the lava. Note that in all fecal samples, rhabditiform larvae or hookworms may be found. These are also motile. However, they can be differentiated by their longer buccal cavity and indistinct genital primordium. Hymenolipis nana egg is 45 to 50 micrometers in size and has two membranes, thin external membrane and thicker internal membrane. Note filaments arising from two poles of the inner shell. Note the typical hexacanth embryo. This is a Hymenolipis diminuta egg. This is usually spherical and measures 75 to 80 micrometers. They are much larger than Hymenolipis nana. Note the thick shell and the absence of polar filaments. The typical hexacanth larva can be seen here. Sometimes artifacts can be confused with parasites during examination of feces. Let's now look at some of the artifacts commonly seen in fecal smears. <laughs>